Tom, please introduce our guest for tonight. Absolutely, Dr. Joe. Tonight we have back Horizontal Sleeper. Yep. Son of a dead guy. Founder of the Church of J-Town, Dave Anthony. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yes. Thank you. Hello. Dave Anthony is an American comedian, actor, screenwriter, and podcaster, making appearances on Marin, Veep, Arrested Development, The Office, and, of course, The Dr. Joe Show. He is best known as the yes. creator and co-host of the comedy podcast, The Dollop, in which he tells notable stories from American history to his friend and fellow comedian, Gareth Reynolds, who has not heard the story before. The pair have a second podcast, The Pastimes, where Anthony picks a paper from a day in history and reads it to Reynolds and a special guest. Since 2019, Anthony has also co-hosted the podcast, The Audit, with writer Josh Olson. A little bit. 2019 was West Wing thing, right? Now it's yeah. the audit. Okay. Wikipedia. The audit, yeah. You're wrong. You're wrong. <laughs> Welcome back. Thank you. Thank so you. I'm Welcome wondering. Back. It's... If there's, I, I just think of the different times in history where the goalposts are at such different points. Like I mm -hmm. remember the Aaron Burr story where he's like out trying to jump on ships at six years old he's attending college at 12 do you think we're at a new point like that where people 100 years from now are going to be like wow he had a he had a house at 26 <laughs> yeah i think we're kind of already there as far as a house at 26 yeah i think that the goalposts have have rapidly changed uh and i think a lot of people aren't aware of it yet Particularly like boomer age people, I don't think they've really grasped how hard it's going to be for their their kids and people below that. Like, uh, but it's definitely, I think, a, a lot's changed for very rapidly. Yeah. In, in what way, Dave? Where are the goalposts now compared to where they were and how long ago? I think it's just, just you know, I'm so I'm I'm a, a Gen X. Um, so I graduated in the early nineties, even though I came out in a horrible recession, I still had opportunity and, um, the costs of my education weren't prohibitive to essentially the rest of my life. Like I, I wasn't burdened with, um, student debt that I couldn't dig out of, um, fairly easy to buy a house, even in California at that time. Um, and then getting a job that paid decently and that I, you know, I mean, think what you want is like rent to be 25%. I would say that's about what I had. I, I think that's all gone. It just seems very predatory yeah. on every level. Yeah. yeah. I don't, and I don't know how that flips or turns around, you know? And this ties in with our talks before is like when we have a generation of young men that are struggling and not meeting these, uh, these ideals of the self-sufficient man it's like oh you can mm -hmm. either say it's external or internal it's like yeah just find someone else to blame yeah always find someone and then right that's where right-wing populism you know springs to life and so which is the scary part but yeah it's but you have a lot of people that you know essentially you, you're you grow up being promised the american dream right and and that's sort of a fallacy at this point i mean it was never We've never had a society where it's easy to succeed and move forward and, you know, move up class levels and all that. Um, but now it's almost nearly impossible for these, the young people. And that just breeds resentment because you've, you, you're grown, you grow up being told, you know, hey, the sky's the limit, whatever you want to do, just work hard. And that, and then you get out there and you realize working hard has nothing to do with it. <laughs> or that you're not a man. Yeah. Yeah. You're not a man. Uh, it's it's pretty brutal like i you know i have had situations where you know times in my life where i've lived in poverty and it's it's devastating and it's it just takes everything out of you it's it's exhausting it's an exhausting experience yeah you know, we have a lot of people there a lot of people there and how how do you think we got here is there is there a way out i i'm an optimist so i i think there's a way out but I mean, there is a way out. I think that, I mean, it, we're sort of past an electoral solution. I think our solution has to be a mass protest and shutting everything down because the people controlling the levers just don't care. I mean, I don't think there's anybody in office who really is going to help people. Like, we've seen it. Like, we've watched it enough now. It's been going on for too long. 
they're all they're all controlled by you know wall street and corporations and until that's gone it won't turn around but look when this country was doing well economically it's when we were the 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 rich were getting taxed out of their minds like 90 mm. percent i think if we went back to that i think if you know we took away all the billionaires money and used it on things for society yeah but we, i think things would turn around very quickly and i think that a whole lot of people are waking up to that and i think that kind of brings us to the topic of trying to suppress that yeah <laughs> well here we are we're right at that moment at that topic so what what is going on what is that suppression about where is it coming from and let's talk about it i mean we we had a period similar to this which was you know post the, the late 1800s and that's when that's when the congress was the same thing it was called the millionaires club and and they they were controlled by the rich much more than in other periods and right now we just have an entire society our media our politicians it's all controlled by the rich they pull all the levers they're they're the ones getting people to fight with each other by going on fox news and anything else and getting people upset about trans people or gay people in schools that's all coming from from wealthy people and think tanks and all these organizations just you know, when you're when you're super rich, what's the best thing that can happen? Take the focus off yourself. Make people fight below you. Make them fight with each other. And as long as these guys have control over the media and everything else, it's just going to keep going that way. And it's it's all media, do you think, or are there are there any pockets where there's reality left? It's very interesting. I you know, I think like a great example of what we had and is now gone because a rich guy took it over is Twitter. Yeah. Um, the other day we had that, the hurricane Hillary tropical storm situation here in LA. And, and previously, you know, when there were fires here or earthquakes or whatever, I would go online and I would easily be able to search in Twitter and find experts that I could follow in that moment and know what was going on or people on the street who are actually filming stuff or talking to people. And this tropical storm hit and there was nothing you, if you tried to search it, what came up were what we call the blue checks, which are people who pay Elon for a monthly subscription. And they're, they're just, it's nonsense. They are there. They're mostly climate deniers. They're mostly right wingers and they live in a different reality. And so they're just putting stuff up. That's not real. And it's like a great example of when a billionaire takes over, but I think there are pockets of stuff. I think there's definitely, there's, there's news sources. There's, you know, I'm a big fan of uh, David Sroda and the lever. Um, uh, the, uh, Walter Bragman, there's, there's journalists that I go to, there's scientists that I go to, to read about COVID and climate change and stuff, but you have to seek them out now yourself. I don't think they come to you. You have to go find them. It, it's such a dilemma, this, this antagonism that we live in this world mm -hmm. where and I mean, the way I see it is it's this enormous cortisol response, this stress hormone. And I don't know if you know some of the brain chemistry, but cortisol interferes with dopamine, which is a neurohormone mm. of pleasure. Very difficult to feel pleasure under stress. And cortisol interferes with oxytocin, not oxycontin, oxytocin, which is the neurohormone of trust. Very difficult mm. to trust anyone under stress. So we we have a global stress response um i think it was it was highlighted from covid but it's mm. been around much much longer than covid you know i was hoping that covid would would help mm. unite people a little bit yeah about yeah. Our, our common <laughs> enemy we held on to that for a while yeah but, but that <laughs> well, has not been the case uh, yeah, you, you, I think at the start, that was sort of the hope like, oh, this will make people sort of come together. But well, then we the see Nancy happened. Pelosi's two freezers of ice cream. Like, that's <laughs> yeah, yeah, that doesn't help. <laughs> but, but it's still, you know, I, I think we were hoping it would come together, but it still reflects this human need that 
in order to be a group, we have to have a common enemy. Mm -hmm. And I sure wish that one day we'll be able to sort of move away from that, that we can just be a group without needing to have an in-group and an out-group. And so with that in mind, I, I want to be sure that the group that I am part of uh, gets a chance to speak. So we're going to take a commercial break and listen to our sponsors, who are a group that I am proud to be part of. We'll be right back with the Dr. Joe Show, Dave Anthony. Stretch the 